Today on the Dodge Garage Download, Mario Bonfante joins us. Now, Mario is a racer who was in a terrible accident, wound up as a quadriplegic, but that doesn't stop him. He's actually working on a program over at the Radford Racing School to teach people how to drive on racetracks using hand controls. We're going to talk with him. Plus, Stellantis has a program that allows folks to take advantage of opportunities to get behind the wheel, even if they're disabled. It's called the Drivability Program, and we're going to learn all about that today on the Dodge Garage Download. You've got a great story. I mean, you've got a lot of publicity for, for the things that you've done. Kind of give us, give us the, the elevator pitch. What's the Mario story in, in, in 60 seconds? I'm still working it out, seeing where it's going. And uh, it's definitely been a journey. So, I mean, 60 second pitch is going to lead into an hour. So um, probably a couple of days. But I just am trying to do the best I can with what I got. I used to race motorcycles, broke my neck when I was 17. Wasn't done, designed a set of hand controls and just wanted to go racing still. So I started racing cars and figuring out different avenues to do that with. And uh, now just really, really, uh, well, when I actually made the first video to get sponsors, I realized then, and I put that on YouTube, that there was a lot of people like myself that wanted to go out fast as well and have fun, do the same things and not just sit in the house. So at that point, the whole goal and direction and derivative of everything I was been working on I also want to go still race, but I want to help out the race too and do what they wanted to do still. So yeah, well, and of, obviously you couldn't do it on two wheels at, at that point. So is that when you segued to cars, or had you been racing cars a little bit prior to the accident? No, I I always wanted to race cars after my career two wheels, but just kind of prematurely graduated uh, in when I was seventeen. So got my pro license when I turned sixteen and signed deals when I turned seventeen for kind of the rest of my career and. Uh, Took a quick detour on a bicycle and ended up taking a dirt sample, doing some dirt jumps, breach contract, and now I'm sitting here talking to you and enjoying a nice day with these guys. You know, back in the days, you know, before before Radford was the official school um, for Dodge and SRT, you know, we had the SRT track experience, and that was where I was. I was there for nine years, and we would occasionally have somebody that would bring their own hand controls to do a track day with us, and they had the you know the old fashioned kind of the push pull things on there. Yours looks a whole lot more uh, complicated, complex than that. It's as simple and complex as it can be. So I simplified what I needed it to do. And it's just essentially everything you can do with your feet and your hands, all in your hands and without your fingers. So they're pretty simple um, as far as functionality. Uh, and it's just twist throttle on the right-hand side, push forward to downshift, pull back to upshift. And then the left hand side articulates forward to brake. So it's on a, I designed like a gyro bearing. So the brake's still mechanically attached, attached to the brake pedal and always want to maintain being able to stop the car. And uh, made this gyro so I can actually turn it and trail brake and shift and but give it to throw out the corner and all that. So just basically use gravity and geometry and everything else as far as physics go to make the controls work as best as possible. And being that my hands don't work, I, have those spools and clamps that hold my hands in place so I can actually use both arms to help maneuver the car and not use all my strength and while I'm requiring myself out like the old set where you don't have very much control with one hand on the wheel and one hand on the gas and the brake and wearing yourself out. So I'm sensitive to using just one hand to steer, yeah. especially being a budget because not having all the muscle function up top. What about the feel of the car? I, th that's always such a, a subtle point and to, to take somebody from like when they're just a novice doing their first track days and they don't, you know, we talk about seat of the pants feel, right? How do you get your seat of the pants feel through, through hand controls? Do you, or do you have to adapt some other way? Uh, I mean, I think I've kind of naturally have that inclination of one of my vehicles and stuff out where the limit is just from racing my entire life in different variables of motorsport. But um, for the most part, I'm a human pendulum. Where's my body being thrown? Because I can't physically hold myself in that position. So I, that's kind of how I read what's going on with the car. And then if I'm not being thrown to the right so much and I'm going left, I'm probably stepping out. So it's uh, enough of my 
bottom's getting a little slippery, a little loose. And it's just, you're just kind of going to gauge it and use different, uh, I guess, senses that you have. You're given abilities to judge certain situations to make the right choice. Let's talk about the, the, the school program. What did you guys have to do to adapt to Mario's situation? We, we had our basic set that you spoke of outfitted him. We have to make some minor adjustments to that, but this whole fact finding mission is to work our way into his development of his product and merge the two is really what we're getting into. So if anything, it's, it's an R and D program, right? Um, and it also allowed us to know on the track too capabilities of switchbacks and turns and what works. And then we have a skid car as well that we're going to work on outfitting when we do this so that, that you can come here and do the same class that anyone else would do. And that's the goal. I mean, I'll tell you what, I'll be honest. We learned some things here, okay? Even from the fact that we have the wrong door handles on our bathrooms. So we're, we're learning, John, and that's, that's the way I wanna put it. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a great thing to have someone that we trust that has a background that we love and Mario that can give us an honest opinion on how to get better. And that's what we're about. Okay, Mario, I, I gotta ask you this because I've got some friends who've been injured in the past and they've, they've always told me that there was a point after the injury that they were, they were just, I don't want to say they were, they gave up, but they were so just beat down, you know, they were really afraid of what was next and they weren't sure how to move forward. And these are car friends of mine too. So, I mean, they're all very similar to people to us, right? They're all, they're all type A personalities. We all love being out there. We all love the smell of fuel. Uh, this this gives those folks an opportunity, right? It gives them a chance. Yeah, and that's kind of the whole basis behind my company, Keep Them Spinning, is the motto. KES Industries is the name, but it's just whatever you're into. I'm into racing cars or going fast and having fun. So we developed a way to do that with everything with four wheels or two wheels or a motor in general. But um, if you want to go fishing, if you want to go take pictures, if you want to go rock climbing or ride a bicycle, ride a motorcycle, we want to figure it out. We want to help people just figure out how to continue to chase their passion and their dreams and accomplish them and achieve whatever they're trying to get to in life. So there's no reason we can't figure out whatever we want to do. It's just a matter of how to do it. The technology we have these days available to us and all the brilliant people around us. And it's always a matter of money, right? So that's just always the big question and how we're going to get there. But that's another step. When we can get people out to the track, even if, if they've never done it before, you know, their eyes go from here to, oh my goodness. And if they've already here, then they go, you know, to a whole new level. When you can open that experience up to anybody, now you've done something special. And that's, that's, that's worth, you know, that's worth tooting your horn on. That's what it's about. And, and like you said, and a lot of times people lose hope or they, they lose their, their, their swag or however you want to call it. There's 10 different their ways. Identity. They, their identity. That's a great one. They lose their identity and, they, and they're beat down. And you're right. When they come here and we do have a welcoming arms attitude, but when they come here and they drive, I have never, that's the luckiest part I have of this job ever had someone go, meh, it was okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't happen. To be able to have someone that maybe has gone through something traumatic in their life or something that changes or changed their identity and they can come here and find themselves again and be part of this and see what we're doing. That's, that's what we care about most. By far. Mario, let me ask you, if, if, you've, if you're going to teach uh, people that have different you know, physical abilities how to do this, what, I mean, I know how to, how to you know, I talk about slow in, fast out, right? I talk about looking through the corners and, and accelerating, you know, you know, you know off the apex and, and whatnot. Are you, what types of things are you going to have to say differently to somebody using a hand control system? Not much. It's pretty much the same thing. I mean, it's just, uh, it's all transfers over. It's all racing. It's all transferring the weight of the car and whatever car you're in and how you do it. So you're not using your feet, you're using your hands and your hands are obviously, usually they're connected to the wheel and your feet are connected to the pedals, but now you're using it all at the same time. So a lot of the able-bodied drivers that have tested them that are professional drivers across the board from rallycross to road course, um, they are like, this is so intuitive. This is everything's right in my hands. I don't think about it. I don't have to use my feet. It's just like, so I'm really curious to see once I do get them all equipped and everyone things all set up, what the instructors and what the actual, what the actual AY people and other drivers are to think of that because it's, uh, it looks very complicated, but it's so intuitive that you wouldn't really even, it doesn't take much to think about it and apply it. 
because it's just going off of gravity and physics. If you're stopping, you're being going forward, so you're pushing the brake and you're downshifting. If you're on the gas, twisting, and pulling back, these are the G-forces. So it's just basic common knowledge. Once you understand that, you're off to the races, literally. Yeah, I think there's one other who he loves it. Off to the race. That was lower. great, dude. That is a home run right there. Yeah, you can, you can bet I'm going to edit right there. Bonk.